You're connected to Business Wrap, inspiring ideas that propel the business community forward. Today's host, Tony Cuthbert. And today we are talking about marketing your nonprofit organization here on the Business Wrap, joined in studio by a panel of experts, and they are. I'm Cindy Kangas. I am the Director of Development and Community Relations at the Capital Area Humane Society. And I'm Todd Ross, a manager of communications with the Michigan Osteopathic Association. And I'm Paul Schmidt, the creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia. Paul, keep the mic if you would, sir. Oh, I will. And we've been talking a lot about knowing your brand, knowing your audience, staying with your mission, telling your story. Well, let's talk about story a little bit here. And uh, Cindy, you know, with all the natural disasters that have been happening or have happened, yeah. What what does, how does uh, the Humane Society work with that? What, <laughs> what have you guys been doing in, in conjunction in response or what do you guys have in place to respond to something like that? Let's, not, let's hear some that's, success that's stories with all this. Well, we, first of all, most Humane Societies are independently owned. So we're not under the umbrella of any other Humane Society. But there is a large group of animal rights organizations across the country that came together and come together anytime there's some sort of natural disaster. And we learned a lot from Katrina because a lot of times people were going in there with great intentions. They took a lot of the pets out. They shipped them out to other shelters across the country and they adopted them out. But then when people went to go back to their homes, they weren't able to be reunited with their pets because there was no way of tracking them. So especially in Texas, um, there was a different plan made so that most of the pets that were already in shelters, phase one was to move them out. And then the rescued pets would start filling up the shelters. Now, our um, specific humane society sent four staff members down in wave three. So their goal was to help with um, the medical needs. If you think about the the animals that are in the water, they're exposed to disease, that sort of thing. Um, So they're still kind of rescuing, helping with the health concerns. And then the next phase will be for them to reunite them potentially with their their owners. Again, it's not a perfect anything because you just never know what's going to happen, but we did learn a lot and we we went down again in phase three to help with this new, new plan for this disaster. Um, a lot of people have asked us, who do I donate to in this disaster? And of course, we've told them, you know, national organizations to donate to or specifically to organizations in Houston. So it wasn't as though we were making money from this in any way. But again, it is kind of telling our story about how we are caring for pets, not only in our own backyard, but we're sending our staff down and our resources down there so that we can assist in some of these disasters. I mean, and that's right there, hitting, hitting uh, your audience, hitting, you know, furthering your mission, telling your story and that type of thing. Now, Todd, on a different note, I mean, this may not be all, all, you know, pets and stuff, but (laughs) let's talk about your your campaign with the opioid opioid crisis and i've been following that and i think you guys have been doing a marvelous job in informing uh your membership your community on what's going on uh both as an organization and legislatively so talk a little bit about what you guys have been doing there so that's a a, a different type of challenge we're not looking for more members we're not looking for donations what we're looking for is public awareness you know, we want to end the stigma and show that you can treat addiction. That it is, it's a disease. So there's legislative efforts to kind of help shape public policy that that'll address some of this. And the opioid epidemic is is multi pronged. There's lots of different causes, and we're seeing it cut across all demographics, from the UP to Detroit, everywhere. So I think we measure it in different ways. So for me, the more people I can get to um, follow the topic, admit that. They have friends, family, relatives, anything that that have been involved with addiction and and get it out there so we're stopping addiction. And it's easy for me to pick up. We have a a very strong network in in this effort. The state police are involved. The Michigan Hospital Association is involved. So I have a lot of people that we can network. So we we, want to get the message out. It's easy for us to share that. And how have you seen, what, what has been the response? Well, I think that legislatively, we, we have their, their, their ear. I've been on this topic for over three years now, and when I started, it was a war on drugs. And I think that the legislators are finally seeing that it's not, it's not just about putting people in jail, that that's not working. We had a town hall um, at one of our conventions where we had a whole panel of experts and 
Judge Allen from Ingham County was there, and he started out by saying, we, we can't lock them up. This isn't working. They get out of jail. I went to the hearings. People say I was in prison for two and a half years, and when I got out, the first thing I wanted to do was go do more drugs. So we have to treat this like a disease. So for us, the success, I guess, if you can measure it, is just saying more people know, more people are seeing that it's, it's something that's treatable and that we can get legislative policy in place and, and, and healthcare policy in place that can help address that. And so, Cindy, what are, what are the responses that you've gotten uh, by hearing that story of people from here going to disaster areas? You know, it was amazing. We put a post on Facebook saying that um, we were planning to go. We didn't even say any details. We didn't know when our flight was taking off or anything. And um, we had so many responses. People wanted to go. People wanted to give. People were excited that we were doing something locally for the people in Texas. It was amazing. It was overwhelming, actually. And this is Todd. I think that's just, that's so strong. And it, and it makes your brand even that stronger. I think that when it comes down to the end of the year, when you talked about the donor fatigue, that, that if you have a couple in, in, in Ingham County and they're trying to figure out where to give their money, they say, hey, this is the group that's carrying out their mission no matter what. I, I think that's very positive. And it's all about that storytelling. Um, you're telling people stories, you're telling pet stories, but yeah. also people stories. And that's what, that's what really draws people in.